Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm talking a lot about the microservices and recently started recording for uh, microservice deployment. But this is just another uh, blog content which I wanted to publish. Like how can you build a small application or any Node.js microservice which can hit million users. Okay. So we are going to understand the factors which can enable your uh, Nest.js or Express TypeScript or Koa or Happy.js, Node.js API backend to handle the millions of the users, right? Node.js is a known IO blocking single threaded and uh, you can execute easily less CPU intensive task real time with the Node.js. But what happens when you have uh, millions of the user hitting your APIs? Okay, yes, you can scale it, but there is always a limit. Even the framework provides a limit per second these particular framework can handle because that they, these are called benchmark. But obviously you are not going to have only a single instance of uh, that particular application. Node.js uses these uh, powerful tools, PM to process manager, or uh, if you have multi-core systems, you can have multiple instances of uh, Node.js and you can put a load balancer and all. So in this video, we are going to understand how we can scale. So either you write any kind of application, obviously the whatever you are writing, because it's a known IO blocking doesn't mean that whatever the code you put will be able to handle the users because it's all about how much request the node.js runs inside an event loop because there is an event loop and event queue all the asynchronous tasks get pushed onto the event loop so all those factors let's understand them uh, in the depth okay so in this video we are going to talk about uh, how you can scale your node.js apis which can serve 1 million requests per second okay it might be surprising but yes you can do it the only thing is you just need to know how to do it right because yes you wrote an api can it serve the 1 million users per second i mean node.js is a known io blocking and uh, it can serve 1, 1 million requests per second the only thing is we need to adopt some strategy adopt a scaling strategy so that all those things we are going to talk about in this particular video so we are going to understand how the Node.js API scale. Okay, understanding the Node.js API scaling and before that, I mean, let's say you build a microservice, Node.js microservice and you want that your Node.js API should be able to handle the, the traffic of let's say million users, right? So what all things which we need to be worried or uh, which we need to work on before doing that? So that all those things I will try to cover here. So first important part here is your efficient code and architecture design. It's not like I built any random code which is complex, which is not maintainable, which is not scalable. And I wrote some async await promises all and all those things. And I thought like, okay, I can handle lots of requests because it's all about at the end we are executing your code. Are you breaking down your uh, complexity into chunks? Are you packaging or splitting the code logic in such a way so that it can be reusable and it can be scalable? That all those things really matters when it comes to the scalability. Otherwise, when it, when it comes to getting the job done, you can get it easily. But when it comes to scaling, it all these factors, okay, what all dependencies are you using? How much? What is the import cost of dependency? Is it executing way too much code to get the job done? Let's say you just wanted to check uh, if a variable is undefined and you just imported a chunk of code which is taking like consuming a lot of memory even before executing. So all those things you need to take care. Another important part is decoupling. So uh, whatever the code we are writing that should be loosely decoupled okay and code optimization is something which we always need to worry about okay because we should be able to write optimized code because we want uh, 1 million users to handle this so all these things are at, at code level there is nothing we are doing on the infra side it's all about okay when whatever you are writing that should follow the best practices and best, best standards and should be able to scale properly okay now we'll talk about horizontal scaling because this is another part and i can just put it somewhere here 
horizontal scaling and how we can scale let's say i am running my node.js service on ec2 instance without load balancer so it's like a one system which may be consuming let's say two core and four gb so maybe somehow i will be able to manage the two pm to like i can use a process managers which can split the process like two process consuming individual core but when it comes to the horizontal scaling i cannot be i won't be able to get that much traffic right i need to be able to scale it in such a way that let's say if even if i have four systems because it's all about horizontal scaling where you can put a load balancer in the front so let's talk about that here where you can put a load balancer in front of your system so this is let's say elb and here you can have your tiny systems okay i can just say t2 micro if you are using uh, aws fleet form so this is horizontal scaling and then you can just use this uh, load balancing algorithm okay a how the traffic should be diverted using round robin fashion or using least correction fashion or using ip hash but now earlier if the same system if there was only one system connected it was handling 100 request or 1000 request now you can handle 3000 request because it is still handling only 1000 request 1000 other requests are forwarded to this 1000 other requests are forwarded to this this kind of a strategy you can also adopt let's say i have a big system i have a t2 medium or t3 large i don't know the other name which has let's say 4 core and 8 gb it's still a single system right it can handle a lot of cpu computations because it has a four core but again it's a single process then you have to use some kind of a process manager and you need to run multiple node.js instances on this which is possible you can attach a multiple node.js instance which can run isolately consuming an individual core it will consume one core so i, I think it is a four core system so I can easily run the four core four processes. So in that case, you don't need to worry about application load balancing because that is internally being managed by the library like PM2 process manager and all. But this is how you can do. So you can do a load balancer configuration. If you are using load balancer, then you need to worry about, okay, how you are doing a health check, like which instance is healthy. Let's say if it is unhealthy and you are sending the traffic, then obviously you are getting failure. Let's say I have a 10 T2 micro instance and couple of them are unhealthy. So obviously I need to divert the traffic to the rest of the systems. Then session persistence because persisting the session should be the common platform. Let's say here, this is a session or persist medium, cache, elastic cache. So that should be common. Otherwise what will happen is because the traffic is coming from multiple resources so every compute machine should be able to check okay does the session exist for this user because let's say the first request came to this instance and you persisted the session obviously you can't persist the session on the node.js instance in the memory because let's say second request is coming to this t2 micro and you don't have a session and you will say okay you are not logged in so you need to have a some kind of persistence mechanism which can store the session and every instance can go and check okay does my session exist so all those things load balancing configurations or considerations are different like how you do this we are just using simple application load balancer and you can use uh, on the cloud also like aws provide alb and auto scale configuration also so if uh, your systems are scaling then it will you can add a auto scale configuration so it will add uh, instances automatically you can monitor and fine tune all these scaling configurations okay if these many requests are coming 
and you can even scale based on the number of requests number of users all those things now another thing is the caching because if we are doing caching that means you can serve more because it's always that there is a data source here you will have mysql or postgres database or uh, aurora db let's say i have a mysql so obviously a call to a mysql database on any instance let's say will always cost you because obviously you need to query the database and then the database will respond and then you will send the response back what if i am uh, storing the partial data or let's say the, the request response data temporarily for a particular time in the memory itself maybe you can use elastic cache or because in memory is still a problem when you are using a elb because let's say one request is coming here second is coming there so, so you will lost right so instead of that what you can do is you can have a in memory caching but in that case if the request is coming here then obviously it cannot access its memory which is stored here so it also check okay in memory exist or not that otherwise call the database so better option is you can externalize the caching in, instead of in memory for the this particular system t3 large you can have a in memory caching obviously all the requests will be coming here and you have a common in memory persistence you can access that let's say if you have a single instance but for multiple instance also that will be the same problem because there will be a four different node js processes which cannot share memory memory is like a runtime memory which exists till node js process runs right so you have to externalize the caching to elastic cache like redis you can use and redis is really fast you can say it's a quick uh, fast memory database instead of looking into the database you can just get it from the redis if it is there it will return directly and if all these systems are accessing the same redis instance same redis cluster then it's very easy it will give you the response in the fraction of seconds and that's what we want client side caching uh, if you are just serving the static resources also like the images html javascript files then client side caching will disable making another further calls for getting the same resources another important part is a database query because when you want a um, 1 million users how many how many users how many zeros these many number of users wants to fit your apis then you need to improve at each and every level and what are the levels first is your code level that your code should be more than efficient because i know you can write a code which can take take a 5 second for the same logic because if you are not handling the asynchronous javascript properly you are already blocked okay then code and then scaling uh, your system in infra where your node js process is running and then the external system which you are using to store the data which is database so this is your application system where your node js server is running so all these factors are important how they perform so the next part is the database query optimization okay because we are using database and uh, we need to know that how we can uh, improve the query optimization how we can do the database optimization techniques and when you are using elastic cache let's talk about the the previous topic which is elastic cache then another important aspect is how and when to invalidate the cache okay i have i have cache the the whole api response which is really a frequent api call but when to validate it so there should be invalidation techniques explicit invalidation uh, about particular time or key based invalidations or or api based invalidation let's say if the update is happening now in the database we need to invalidate the key a uh, time already expired 15 minute invalidate the key and because this is mostly key based invalidations if you are using elastic cache and redis you are going to create a key value pair and inside a key key is the elastic cache key and the value is the json object or the data okay database query optimization and uh, everybody knows like if you are building a database then obviously we will be putting the proper primary keys uh, referential constraint foreign keys 
and uh, proper indexing of the columns which we with which we wanted to fetch like let's say i have an email unique put index over there uh, create a index based on the query we are fetching let's say the employee id email course name if those are unique then put a index so whatever the column using which you are doing a where clause try to put uh, the index on top of those columns so that the fetching is a little bit optimized from database side how database managing the the optimization it's on the database another thing is the connection pooling because uh, we are doing this database all the requests are going to the database so it is important how many connections database connections you can uh, you can get let's say if you are getting a thousand request and at the moment if the 900 requests are busy querying database so obviously you will be end up creating a 900 connections to the database so it's better to create a connection pool where you can create n number of connections and whenever the connection is released it will put that connection again back in the pool so whenever the request come it will get the connection again and it will query your database so yeah there are the orm provides a connection pool also either you can connect to the database directly using connection url or you can provide a connection pool configuration where you can configure okay i need at least 100 connections to this database on this instance or not even 100 let's say i have five uh, t2 micro so obviously i can have minimum 20 to 30 connection pool connections which can be managed by the connection pool so whenever the connection is occupied you don't need to wait for the next connections to be associated right you don't need to query for with a new connection it's already there query writing and query caching that's another thing query but because what we are doing in the database is we are querying to the database for the data so query should be optimized if you are doing some kind of a joins and all otherwise for the basic select statements we just need to fetch only the right set of data and you should put a where clause on the unique indexes or the indexing should already be happened okay so database performance is all about how you manage how you are doing the indexing of the column how you are configuring the tuning and what are the workload because database also comes in the variants like okay because database is at the end is a system running on the cloud it can be a medium instance large instance and all so you need to take care of how many users or how many traffic you are getting that means i can have a large instance or always i i use for these purpose uh, dynamo because dynamo will auto scale you don't need to worry about how many how what configuration you did put for the database dynamo is a no sql uh, aws managed but when it comes to scaling it it auto scale you don't need to worry about okay i should put a t2 micro or a t3 large or medium uh, rds instance so that is already being managed or you can use uh, mysql aurora even if you are going to use uh, rds you can use i think mysql aurora which is aws managed and it can uh, scale very well uh, that i was talking about uh, this is really important and it comes to the code so we talked about database query optimization and all now first is asynchronous and non io blocking code so what this is related to what you are writing code because node.js provides you the good opportunity that you can write a known io blocking uh, asynchronous operations and node.js internally uses the event loop so that means when the request is coming it's not blocking the main thread whenever there is a re request is going to the database it says okay i'm putting you to the event queue and let other request coming so that i can process it so node.js is by nature is single threaded known io blocking so we should harness the power of the node.js and write a code in such a way that we can we can utilize the maximum concurrency concurrency and throughput by writing the known io blocking code using callback using promises because if you write too much async await you are actually blocking the main thread so always try to use a callback and a promises in such a way that you are not blocking the execution of other from other requests coming in the other thing is simplifying the asynchronous flows don't do too much async await just try to simplify your uh, asynchronous execution using promises and the callback and uh, apart from that use event driven so this is the one 
another is event driven architecture because we are using microservices and microservices can do whatever you have requested but when it comes to the processing then you should always delegate that to the event driven system where you can throw the event and then there is some other subscriber or listener is dealing with that event and fulfilling your request instead of doing everything in a just a one single uh, microservice let's say i have a couple of microservices for a simple order processing so i have like 1 2 3 if i try to do everything in a single request okay there is a request of create order and and if you start doing okay i have created order then i will be sending a notification i will be creating order and uh, also creating the payment everything i'm doing then obviously i'm it's going to take a lot of time and i'm blocking lots of request i cannot scale very well so my objective is only to create order and through the event order created and i'm done i will just acknowledge the the api requested okay i'm done i am sending you 200 because i have order created now this is the event which you will send to the party which is receiving the event they will take care of creating the order okay order is created now i will create a payment subscription or something like that and i will manage that so these are like loosely coupled systems which can communicate with each other using events they don't know each other the only objective of this is to create order and acknowledge so i can hunt send uh, thousands of the request of create order because it knows i can create a thousand order and then send thousand events to the listener service that's fine because this is totally asynchronous we don't we are not blocking anything here and and user is not even aware that we are emitting thousand events parallelly and then the listener service is listening to events one by one this is all this is already asynchronous we don't need to worry about okay what is the load how much time it will take it's a background job so always try to build a event driven architecture in an event driven system when you want to scale the the whole system node js is not a multi threaded but when you want to create any process then always create a child process using worker thread so let's say if you are doing some kind of a computation or bulk processing then you can use a child processes or a pm2 instances you can use a process manager like pm2 and create a child processes for that okay you should be able to error handle the asynchronous operations in such a way that so, so that we are not uh, creating a bottleneck in the execution performance considerations the another important part because i wrote this blog so i'm just picking these points one by one this is performance consideration so we should always be able to let's say i'm i'm building an api with a millions request handler so i should be also testing it i will be checking the load balancing configurations uh, is there any memory leaks i am performing any any kind of a blocking even i am i blocking the event loop or event queue because let's say if i am writing uh, codes in such a way that it is stuck somewhere like 100 requests together going and they are like not performing well so if you are using if you are using a blocking code lots of await statement in just a one single block and in await you are doing further 10 awaits obviously you are doing a blocking and you cannot perform that well another important part is using the microservice architecture approach to build this kind of let's say i was talking about event driven architecture let's say if i need to scale in such a way that i can handle the request of thousands users then obviously i need to adopt some particular uh, mechanism of uh, event driven architecture or some kind of microservice architecture that can evolve over the time and then next thing is what approach you are building for building the systems okay because you can use a restful services you can use a graphql at the end all are like code you are writing and they are responding based on they are lying on the http protocol you can also use a grpc and you can use a proto buffer and all that's based on your requirement so you can be using simple a restful services or a graphql services you can be using simple grpc interface where you are sending a request using proto buffer and uh, getting the response back from the receiver service or if you want to scale it up in a different asynchronous way you can use the message broker because it's all background processing i will just 
receive millions of requests and i will delegate it to the background process that's another way of uh, getting the millions request but in that way i will be just acknowledging the user that i will process your request i won't be sending the the response right away because it's all asynchronous operations where you are using RabbitMQ, kafka sns sqs whenever you need a background processing you use these asynchronous mechanism and obviously they scale very well because at uh, you are not uh, doing something right away you are actually batching the request and performing in the background then performance monitoring tool maximizing the efficiency you should identify the bottlenecks okay what are the, the the bottlenecks in your code performance you should try to identify it and try to evaluate and try to remove it performance tuning and I, so there are lots of performance tools like okay i know new rally key matrix new rally gives you really nice overview okay how much cpu you are consuming what are the the request per what i mean i have used new relic and i was like uh, sending the thousands of the request using these node tools to do the performance monitoring and you can get even the statics of individual api that this api is responding in 6 millisecond 100 millisecond 1000 millisecond so you can use these tools to evaluate okay do i need to improve at the code level or do i need to improve at the infra level how many request queries are going to the database because it can evaluate your database it can monitor your ec2 instance it can monitor your lambda anything that's a new relic so you, it, you because you need to take care of the response time you need to reduce the response time you need to increase the throughput you need to also monitor the error rates coming from the api let's say after i send a 5000 request together i started getting 404 or gateway timeout because uh, nobody was able to handle that request so all those things you should be able to monitor through these uh, monitoring tool you cannot uh, build your own monitor tool you can use utilize these all these tools you need to monitor all the error rates for 4xx 400 401 403 all these requests let's say if uh, you are hitting a thousand requests together and you are not able to get the the elastic instant and it will just start throwing you not found not found so you know okay what is the latency and how much you are utilizing the cpu resources because this matters okay if uh, you are using eight core instance or four core instance and your cpu utilization is only 10 percent that means you're not doing something right you need to improve it either divide your resources in such a way that you can utilize the resources properly instead of just spinning up the 10 more instances performance testing and load testing obviously load testing is really important when you want to serve millions of requests and there are lots of modules which can actually create a uh, threads like jmeter you can use that will give you the real user feeling you can create a uh, multiple threads and they can act as individual users and start sending the request to this other than that uh, all the other aspects of improving the apis increasing the securities and all all are in the considerations you should be using rate limiting but those are all all api security aspects but the other than that is you should be using compression at the api level compressed data you should be using http2 that is faster than http 1.x you should be using cdn integration if you are using some kind of a static resources then you should be using cdn to serve those content compression use some kind of a ggp library that can uh, compress the content being served from uh, http interface okay these are some of the consideration i mean this is really very big topic there is no such thing like okay this can be done you should be using secured mechanism obviously you should be using https and tsl you should be using a proper certificate for your domain and you should be using then it comes to all security aspects you use using the role based authentication authorization for security you should be using all security aspects for the apis in that case you should be using rate limiter right it's not like okay you are not using a rate limiter and somebody is spamming the request and sending the million request okay so in that case rate limiter and handling these all http headers so you should be using helmet and all secure and security 
added modules npm module for your apis you should be using a proper uh, logging security all the 10 different aspects of uh, building a robust production ready application all those things will be coming into the picture you should be taking care of the sql injection penetration testing vulnerability and all okay that's all i will be also sharing a link of my blog which talks about all those things in more depth okay i hope you will you will just look into that and get more understanding about how you can write a node.js microservice which can handle millions of requests yes node.js can handle it but with the right configurations and right 